everyone, and welcome to our series, God Friends. You know what it is to be a good friend, right? But do you know what it is to be a God friend? So what is a God friend, you ask? Well, a God friend isn't just a positive influence in their friends' lives. They actually help them to grow closer to Jesus. They're the kind of friend that you want in your life because they don't just help you to be the best you that you can be. They also help you to live a life sold out for God. Together, we'll be looking at some of the God friendships in the Bible and learning from them how we can be God friends to those around us. I don't know about you, but I want to be the kind of friend that leads my friends closer to Jesus. Should we get into it? Let's start with a game. Boom! Kids Life, welcome to the game. You'll never guess what this game is called. It's called Spooning Lollies into a Cup. How do you play? You get a spoon, you get some lollies in a bowl, and then you put the lollies into the cup. First to transfer it all wins. However, you do not use your hands, you don't use your feet. You put the spoon in your mouth like this. First to get all the lollies into their cup wins. Or if the timer runs out, the person with the most lollies in their cup, they win. Makes sense, Karis? Makes sense. No cheating. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Time's up, team. How, who won, me or Karis? I think I won. I think she won. <laughs> anyway, that was really fun. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> Honestly, that was actually really fun. Let's see what our friends are doing. See ya. Bye. Dad, you're here. How was the flight? How was your bus? How are you? It's so nice to see you in person. Hey, Leela. Hey, uh, welcome to Old Country Town. Is that actually what the town's called? You betcha. Huh. Oh, oh, bless you, bless you. There is so much 
crawling out here. Yeah, but you'll get used to it. Uh, hey, uh, what are you reading there? Uh, it's, uh... Is that one of my letters? Dawn, oh, you! Pen pals no longer. Now we're pal pals. But, but honestly, I am over the moon that you're here. You are such a godsend. No, I'm not. Don't be a negative Nelly now, come on. But I'm serious. Seriously serious? Yeah, when you told me your brother broke his arm and you needed help on the farm, I, I was a terrible friend. Oh, but. All I could think about was how much I did not want to leave my room. But. So I wrote you a poem as an apology. Dawn, you did what now? <clears throat> You don't, you don't have to do that. Yeah, but... You don't think that after all these months as pen pals, I haven't got you figured out, little Miss Introvert? I wasn't even gonna help you out, and you've been so good to me. Yeah, but you're here now, aren't you? Yeah, but... You, you were overthinking it. Here, I know just the thing. What is it? Well, it's this YouTube channel, The Library. They have all kinds of lessons about stuff like this. Arr, ahoy there, Kids Life! Welcome to the Kids Life Library! My name is Captain Cannot Swim, and this is me trusty owl, Parrot. Hello there, Parrot! Hello! Hello there, Kids Life! Arr, you might be familiar with me best friend Lyle, but he is not here today. I'll be telling you the story about two best friends from the Bible. Are you ready, Parrot? Oh, yes I am! Are you ready, Kids Life? Ahoy, let's dive into the word. John and Peter are the best of friends who work together as fishermen. And one day Jesus appeared to them and called them to follow him. Both John and Peter left their lives behind to follow Jesus and learn from him throughout his ministry on the earth. They watched Jesus perform miracles. They ate with him and they traveled with him, all the while experiencing these marvelous things together. After Jesus' death and resurrection, John and Peter were amongst the first believers to spread the gospel message. One day, Peter and John were going to the temple to pray when they saw a man who could not walk lying at the temple gate. The lame man saw Peter and John and asked them for some money. Ooh! Peter looked at him and said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to ye. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter took him by the hand, and as he helped him up, instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he could walk. Yippee! The man went with him into the temple courts, where he began jumping and praising God. The people who saw were amazed and astonished, and Peter began speaking and teaching the people about Christ. Woo! Meanwhile, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John, deeply troubled by what they were teaching them about the resurrection of Christ. They seized him and put them in jail. The next day, they questioned Peter and John, asking, by what power or name did ye do this? Peter, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, told them it was by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that he was the only name that could bring salvation. The man that had been healed stood right next to John and Peter, so the priests and officials could not deny this miracle. They couldn't do anything against him, so they had to let them go. They were worried they would leave and tell more people about Jesus, so they commanded them to be silent from now on. Ooh. But Peter and John remained strong together and replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. The officials tried to threaten them again, but Peter and John remained strong and they could not decide how to punish them. 
All the people around them were praising God for what had happened, so they released them. Well, that's great, but what has it got to do with Dawn? You are here. It was inconvenient for you, and you're way out of your comfort zone, but you're here. But I wasn't going to come. But you're here. You stuck by me, just like how John and Peter stuck it out together. I did? You are a more loyal friend than you give yourself credit for. I am? Don, you're here, and now you and I, we can run the farm together, and nothing can come between us. Um, well, <laughs> with the truck broke down, I guess we're gonna have to hoof it. <laughs> oh. How far is the property? Oh, just a stone throw past a country mile. <laughs> God has a great plan for each of our lives, and having godly friends to do that with is so important. Think of the godly friendships that you have right now, and imagine growing up together, supporting each other, and doing God's work together. Your bond as friends and dedication to Jesus will make that journey so much better together. Jesus says in John 15, 13, that there's no greater love than for one to lay down their life for a friend. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us when he laid down his life for us. Jesus is the best and most loyal friend that we could ever have. When we are loyal to our friends and stand by them in God's plan for their lives, we're showing them the kind of godly friendship that Jesus models. Kids Life, we have a new memory verse for this new series. It's Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Thanks for joining us, Kids Life, and we will see you again next week.